Hello and welcome to V News. Here come today's headlines. Vietnam and the Republic of Korea Party strengthen ties. Prime Minister meets with high phone voters. Statistic Office launched labor database. ASEAN helps boost regional economic development. The Grand National Party of the Republic of Korea always seeks to further enhance its relations with the Communist Party of Vietnam and promote the all-around cooperation between the two countries. Visiting Grand National Party Secretary General Kim Chung Kwon made the affirmation at a reception hosted by Party General Secretary Nguyen Phu Chak in Hanoi on August 16. Kim said the efforts contributed to effectively implementing the strategic cooperative partnership between the Republic of Korea and Vietnam. He expressed his joy at the development of the friendship and cooperation between the two countries. Chuck Woomley welcomed the visit by the Grand National Party delegation. He said the visit is an important development in the friendly and cooperative relations between the two parties. He affirmed that the Memorandum of Understanding on the Enhancement of Cooperation signed by the two sides on this occasion is a new step forward, helping foster ties between the two parties in particular and the two countries in general. The same day, Secretary General Kim Chung Kwon was received by Vice Chairwoman of the National Assembly Nguyễn Thị Kim Ngân. Prime Minister Nguyễn Tấn Dũng has proposed that the northern port of city of Haiphong makes greater effort to curb inflation, cut public investment, inject more capital into nearly finished projects, and effectively implement social welfare policies. The government leader made the proposal while meeting with high phone voters on August 17. The voters proposed the National Assembly increase its supervision of the implementation of the party and state policy at the grassroots levels. Especially in the fields of environmental protection, the reform of administrative procedures and social policies. They urge the government to continue paying more attention to education and training, developing the seaport and airport system nationwide in a harmonious way and removing difficulties for small and medium enterprises. The Prime Minister spoke highly of the voters' opinion. He said the party and state pay special attention to the quality of tertiary education and vocational training as well as education reform. On the voters' opinion on the EC situation, Dung said Vietnam is consistent with the policy of settling dispute in the EC with peaceful measure on the foundation of international law and the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The Vietnam Academy of Social Sciences and the Cambodian Royal Academy have agreed to expand cooperation in scientific research focusing on sustainable growth and climate change. The agreement was reached during the talks between delegations of the two bodies in the Cambodian capital city of Phnom Penh on August 16. The agreement's contents also included organizing joint research projects, cooperating in holding science workshops, and publishing science reports in professional magazines. The Vietnamese delegation recorded the Cambodian science proposals on opening a center for research about Vietnam in the Cambodian Royal Academy. The Cambodian side agreed to Vietnam's suggestion on organizing a conference between scientists from the three scientific institutes of Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos for the first time. The General Statistics Office, GSO, on August 16 launched its online data portal on labor and employment statistics for the 2007-2010 period. The move is aimed at improving access to and storage of information obtained from the annual labor force survey. Users can access the information at www.gso.gov.vn slash Corsilio LDVL. The data warehouse was one of the important tasks in boosting use of information technology in the statistics sector. This is the second data warehouse launched in Vietnam, following another on information from surveys on household living standards in 2004, 2006 and 2008, which was launched in January.
the second Vietnam Rice Festival to be held in the Mekong Delta province of Sóc Trăng from November 8th until November 11th is expected to draw participation of 17 consulates general and various foreign enterprises. Under the theme Vietnam Rice during the integration, the event will include exhibitions, trade fair and art performances, a seminar on Vietnam's rice brand, and a ceremony to honor scientists contributing to the country's rice production. Outstanding rice exporters and farmers will also be held as part of the festival. Sóc Trăng province produces 2 million tons of rice annually. It ranks fifth among rice producers in Vietnam. According to a five-year plan approved by the Prime Minister, Petro Vietnam is to be one of the nation's leading groups, both in local and global market, with growth up to 20 percent a year. The group aims to increase oil and gas reserve and petroleum exploration output by 35 to 40 million tons and 23 to 34 million tons of oil equivalent per year, respectively. By 2015, Petro Vietnam would be able to produce about 16 to 17 million tons of refined oil, meeting 50 to 60 percent of domestic petrol demand and 60 to 70 percent of nitrogenous fertilizer demand. By 2015, around 50 to 60 percent of materials demand for petrochemical and petrochemical products would be satisfied. At the same time, the group would put three biofuels plants into operation while developing biofuel production and distribution system nationwide. Petroleum services would be encouraged to grow at an average rate of 20 percent per year, the plant says. A trade fair showcasing Vietnam's high-quality products opened in the central city of Da Nang on August 16. The annual event aims to encourage Vietnamese to use Vietnamese products and boost domestic production. It draws the participation of 200 enterprises nationwide who are displaying the products on 500 pavilions at the trade fair. During the fair, which will run until August 21st, various activities for businesses to promote new products and seek cooperation opportunities will also be held. The event is jointly held by the High Quality Vietnamese Products Business Association and Saigon Marketing Weekly magazine. According to Beijing radio stations and the voice of Russia, thanks to a strong economic growth and close connectivity, ASEAN has overcome the economic crisis safely. The bloc hopes to further reduce its dependence on developed nations and promoting its impact. At the recent ASEAN Economic Ministers' Meeting in Manado, Indonesia, 10 Economic Ministers and ASEAN Secretary General Surin Pisuwan said that ASEAN members have completed more than 70 percent of the ASEAN Economic Community Roadmap. By the end of 2010, 99.11 percent of tariffs of six ASEAN members, namely Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore and Thailand, were already eliminated. Meanwhile, 98.86 percent of tariffs of Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar and Vietnam were ranging between 0 and 5 percent. ASEAN's merchandise trade grew at 32.9 percent to over 2 trillion U.S. dollars last year, while its FDI also recorded a remarkable increase. With a population of 500 million, a GDP growth of 1.5 trillion U.S. dollars, and its members' economic growth of between 5.7 percent and 6.4 percent, ASEAN will become an impetus for economic development in the Asia-Pacific region in particular and the world as a whole. And that's the end of our program today. Thank you for watching and see you next time.